Welcome to the celebration of Mass for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time from Assumption Church in River North, Chicago. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. In today's gospel, Jesus encounters a number of people on the road to Jerusalem and invites them, asks them, calls them to follow him. Let's pause now and acknowledge our own sinfulness, our own inattentiveness to the Lord, and ask for the Father's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the truth that we seek. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You call us to share eternal life with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory lord god heavenly king O oh god almighty father Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelfth. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and, taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh, and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left, and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You 
are my inheritance, O Lord. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you? O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. You are my inheritance, O Lord. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life, Fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, 
Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We should all know by now how often Jesus used images from everyday life to explain the reign of God. But the problem is that some of these images that would have been very familiar to people in first century Palestine are often unfamiliar to us today. So I probably am not going too far out on a limb to say that few of us who are watching this mass have ever plowed a field with a team of oxen, much less can appreciate how focused you have to be to keep 12 yoke of oxen moving in the straight line like Alicia was able to do in that first reading. So rather than talk about oxen, let me use an image that probably is more familiar to most of us, driving to the airport. Let's say you have a flight to catch two hours after this Mass, and so right after your time at church at Assumption, you jump into your car, jump on the Kennedy, and head for O'Hare. Now what would happen if instead of looking through the windshield at what lay ahead, you looked only at the rearview mirror, at what was behind you? You're not going to make it, are you? Even a visitor from Mars would probably figure out just by looking at how big the windshield is and how small the rearview mirror is, what should be the focus of our eyes as we're journeying somewhere. We're supposed to focus on what lies ahead and not what's behind. Or again, maybe you're driving to the airport and there are several people in the car with you and you're looking ahead and, and then someone else in the car says, uh, say, what, what, what church was that that we just passed? And you say, well, you know, I, I'm not sure. It, it might have been St. Stanislaus or maybe St. Mary the Angels. I, can't quite get a good view of it. Or someone says, is that a new gas station over there on the right? Oh, I think you're right. I, I wonder if the prices are a little bit cheaper over there. I don't know. We're not going to make it either, are we? Hmm? We're not going to make it to the airport if we don't keep our eyes fixed on where we're going. So let's hold on to that image for a moment because I think it helps us understand what's on Jesus' mind and what we're being taught in our first and second readings today. In our gospel, you hear how Jesus is interacting with a number of potential followers, and he seems dismissive of them at best, and at worst, downright rude like he hasn't had his first cup of coffee yet. He seemed to be not only not very understanding and certainly not very welcome. You know, uh, someone comes up and says, I'll follow you. And he said, well, you got no place to lay your head, no place to call home. And then other people that he calls to follow, uh, one says, I, I just want to bury my father first or I want to say farewell to my family which seem like legitimate reasons to delay, but he won't allow it. You know, in this renew my church process, one of the phrases they keep using is that we need to practice radical hospitality, this rather focused sense of welcome. Well, it seems like Jesus is practicing radical inhospitality. Hmm? And what he said to these three people would have been 
considered very rude, except that he's not joining, asking them to join the faith community of Assumption at Orleans and Illinois Street. He's talking about not joining a church, but joining a movement. And sometimes we forget about what following Christ is about. It's not just joining something that's static, it's about joining Christ as he moves forward with his mission. Because Jesus is on the move. He's on his way to his place of destiny, Jerusalem, where he's going to face judgment and death. And the scripture says that he was resolutely determined to go there. A more literal translation said, he set his face toward Jerusalem. He's not going to look backwards. He's not going to look to the side. He's looking straight ahead. He's on the move. And his one question is, are you with me or not? Now is the time of decision. I'm not going to stand around and try to convince you to get into the car. Is following me your priority or not? The plane's going to leave in two hours. Are you going to be on it or not? Now, scripture scholars tell us that some of Jesus' words to these would-be followers are, wouldn't have sounded as abrupt to them as they may sound to us. When someone asks permission to go bury my father, doesn't mean necessarily that the funeral is the next day. It more likely means can I stay at home until after my father dies, which would have been the expected custom for elder sons. So it might mean not a delay of a few hours or a few days, but many, many years. And the phrase, no one puts a hand to the plow and looks back is worthy of me, was an expression that people often used in that culture about not second guessing our decisions. So it may have been a reminder to the man that he'd made a decision to follow him and not to forget about it. Nevertheless, I think he's offering a real challenge to us in the same way that he offered to these potential disciples that he met on the road. Are you with me or not? And I think our scriptures today suggest various things that often stand in the way of our making a deeper commitment to Christ and the reign of God. What keeps us from walking on the road with him right now? Well, the one thing I think that would keep us from following Christ is that we keep looking at what lies behind. Now, I haven't mentioned John and James yet, but in the first part of the gospel, uh, Jesus and his caravan are gonna pass through the Samaritan territory on the way to Jerusalem. And the Samaritans were the old enemies of the Jews, and so they were also practicing inhospitality to Jesus and his followers. And in response to this, John and James want to up the ante in a big way. Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Let's use some juice to show them, those Samaritans, who they're dealing with here. Jesus is the Messiah, and he means business. Let us do some action on your behalf. Lord, let's have some fireworks here. Let's destroy them, let's destroy their property, let's destroy their oxen and everything else. Now, you and I may not get that outraged when we've been insulted or betrayed or not respected in the way that we think we should. But their reaction points to a problem that's serious very often at a personal level and at a global level, and things that hold back the kingdom of God from coming. Things that happened in the past that we're still angry and resentful about. We're looking in the rearview mirror instead of the potential that lies ahead. And just as in our global situation, nations are always trying to up the ante. Let's get more weapons of mass destruction. More countries are seeking to get in on the action. 
because they remember what's happened. All the gang violence is really street justice, isn't it? Taking revenge on what happened last week or last month or last year. And Jesus is saying to John and James and to us, things that are in your past that you're angry and resentful about, let it go. Set your face on the reign of God. The reign of God is about peace and forgiveness and justice and love. And resentments from the past are incompatible with the reign of God. You can't use the weapons of this world to win over the world. Stop looking to the side, stop looking backwards. Look to my vision. Keep your focus. And you know, in these challenging days following the Supreme Court decision on abortion, when so many people on both sides seem to be calling down fire from heaven on their opponents, I think Jesus would say the same thing. Keep your focus. What kind of world do you want to create? Certainly a kingdom that lacks violence of any sort and a kingdom in which we love life at every level. So don't look behind. The second thing and that keeps the kingdom from coming is that we're too busy to follow Christ. And maybe we've used that excuse too. You know, I get a little bit more serious about my faith when I retire, when the kids leave home, or I'm established in my career, or this or that. You know, we're all busy. It's amazing how many people have told me they're too busy even to go to church. But sometimes we have to stop and think, well, what are my real priorities? Are some of the things that I'm treating as important, or they're not so important? And even when we come to church, as we listen to the scriptures and receive the sacrament, when we watch Mass on video, Christ is not just entertaining us for an hour. He's calling us to a deeper commitment, a deeper commitment to Christ and to the reign of God. We should never leave Mass exactly the same person that we got here to be. Jesus is calling us as we leave here to follow him and bring his kingdom to life around us. And then finally, and this is the thing that St. Paul talks about, what holds back the kingdom, what keeps us from responding to Christ, is the desires of the flesh. Now usually when you hear somebody talk about the desires of the flesh in church, you assume they're talking about sex. But as St. Paul makes it clear, the desires of the flesh are about a lot more than sex. Flesh, he says, is anything that's at war with the Spirit of God that's within us. In other words, it's anything that holds us back from letting God's Spirit lead us. The flesh is the part of us that, that wants us to always be comfortable, who wants things always to be convenient, everything to be familiar and easy. The flesh is the part that's always trying to get us to take care of ourselves. And we can see how powerful the flesh can be when we do something that goes against the flesh. Um, when we try to give up something for Lent, or go on a diet, or seek healing from our addictions, the flesh fights back, tries to make us hold on to our habits of sin. When there is an injustice or somebody treating unfairly, the flesh doesn't want us to speak up, doesn't want us to care about other people, doesn't want us to care about the planet. Stay in your comfort zone. But it's the spirit that draws us out of our comfort zone and gets us to focus on the reign of God. So Paul says, don't be enslaved by the desires of the flesh. Come and know the freedom of the children of God. So we're all dealing with a lot of stuff in our lives, and the world is dealing with a lot of stuff. And we can be distracted by the past, or distracted by our busyness, or distracted by our desires to live in our comfort zone. But Jesus is always inviting us away from that, and in a very down-to-earth way, 
inviting us to follow him along the path of peace and justice and love. And now we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As people led by the Spirit, we raise our voices in prayer. For the church, that we may hear God's call to discipleship and seek first the reign of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in Ukraine, that the war may end, the innocent may be protected, and the refugees may be guided to safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater harmony among religious traditions, that people of faith may work together to combat hunger, homelessness, and a lack of education, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to be guided by the Spirit, that God would free us from our sins, our addictions, and our unhealthy attraction to the things of this world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who strive to eliminate violence in our communities, that hearts may be opened to their message of justice, understanding, and peace for the protection of all human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live with chronic pain or chronic illness, that they may experience the healing touch of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers today and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Though I may speak with bravest fire and have the gift to all inspire and have not love, my words are vain as sounding brass and hopeless gain. Though I may give all I possess, and striving so my law profess, but not be given my love within, the prophet soon turn strangely thin. Come, Spirit, come, our hearts control. Our spirits long to be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed. By this we worship and are freed. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. 
for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. O oh God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop and all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through 
him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share God's gift of peace with the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. We pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. Seek the face of the Lord and long for him. He will bring you his light and his peace. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. Let us pray. 
May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Lord, whose love in humble service bore the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken offered mercy's perfect deed, we, your servants, bring the worship, not of voice alone, but heart, consecrating to your purpose every gift which you impart. 